as we look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, trusting him to speak to us tonight. For the next few moments, you're going to hear things you've never heard before. But one thing I'm going to tell you, they're all going to be based on a scripture. And God is going to unlock something in your life. You're going to begin to see life from a different angle. Hallelujah. All the impossibles are going to become possible. Because nothing is impossible with the Lord. And people came in from Florida, from uh, Greenwood, from Greenville, from all over. From North Carolina, from South Carolina, from uh, Lincoln, from everywhere. And you're, you're very much welcome. This, this is like a really, a, a, this is a glorious event. And we're streaming the service right now. And people are watching it around the world. Can I welcome the world? They're still watching. God bless you so much. Glory to Jesus. And uh, I know that God is going to do something tremendous. And he has already begun to do mighty things. You know, if I turn to lose the microphone for testimonies, I won't be able to preach because I know there's a lot of testimonies. But we do have a testimony form. And we're going to uh, give you the testimony form. And you can fill up that form. And we can hear what God has done for you. And also, we have an information card. They're going to give that to you. Uh, if you want to stay in touch with us, we want to stay in touch with you too. But one of the ways we stay in touch with you is if we have your contact information, we can mail you when we're coming in town. I remember when I was here in August, I told you I'll be back before the end of the year. And my schedule was really occupied, but you know, I kept on hearing Augusta, Augusta. I said, what? Augusta. So then the Lord gave me this date. Somebody say amen. And uh, I'm so happy because I was praying about it because I only want to go where God tells me to go. There's a lot of invitations but I tend to go just where I believe God is telling me to go. And uh, we want to emphasize this, that this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad it. You could do that during the offering. Right now we're going to hear the word. Thank you so much. Uh, Isaiah, if you don't mind, you can turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 60. I'm not going to take much of your time, but I'm going to try my level best to let the Holy Ghost submit as I submit to him to allow me to speak into your life in Jesus name let's pray father I humble myself as your servant dear Holy Spirit I take my seat you take over right now and begin to speak to us I want to hear a fresh word and I know you are here by your spirit my God speak to us we came from all over we're not gonna live the same way we came in the mighty name of Jesus, take us to the next level of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people said, Amen. Right now, forget about your bills. Forget about your problems. Forget about a sister that has been talking bad about you in church. Forget about a brother that has not returned your call. Or has been giving you a dirty look. Forget about that, you know washing machine that broke down forget about the problem in your car forget about anything whatever lawsuit pain anything forget about food dinner lunch breakfast somebody say hallelujah for the next few moments just tune into the glory realm and let god speak to you and i'm so grateful uh, for uh, the way god has used most of you here to be a blessing to us you've been a great 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 support as partners and loyal people i mean i could start mentioning names and names but just not going to the revelation but you're such a wonderful people and every time god uh, brings us together i get encouraged to see you just to see you that's an encouragement hallelujah some of you have known you for more than eight years i remember the first time i came in augusta we were at the uh, some hotel somewhere there i don't even remember the name whether it was ramada now they've changed names and names and names Ramada Inn. Thank you, Sarah. That was Ramada Inn. And that's, oh, I came to that place and uh, out, I traveled with an old couple, uh, Ron and Mudge. They still love the Lord. They're retired. Uh, they, don't tra they don't travel anymore, but they love the ministry and they're still part of this ministry. And uh, we came here and uh, one of the persecutions I faced was something came from honking my Kawala Mimato hotel room. And my car had no alarm. The, the devil was so angry that I came to the city. And he would come and begin to honk my car. Loud. I was driving some Ford Crown Victoria. And uh, it, it had no alarm. But something would just come and honk the car. Boo! And all the people would be mad. 
I wake up from my sleep and I'll go and try to stop it. And when, what I decided to do is to tell my friend, take the battery off so we can sleep. Somebody say amen. That was the persecution we faced, but no more. Nobody honks my car. <laughs> Another time I came to the city and I saw, God showed me in a spiritual realm how the, the powers of the mason, the wickedness in the high places had put a blanket over this region. And he showed me how dark it was. And I, as I came to preach, words were, that were coming out of my mouth were like bombed, like high, high level uh, with accuracy, rocks that could penetrate the heavens and break the dark power, the dark cloud. And then when, the, when it would break the thick dark cloud over this area, I saw the glory of God, the light could shine through those halls. As I spoke the word, the word pounded the heavens and there was light beaming down. And then these demons, the powers came and told me, we're going to kill you if you don't stop disrupting our peace. And I told him, there's nothing you can do because the Lord is with me. Somebody say hallelujah. And the devil is a liar. Can I hear an amen to that? There's been things changing. When I came here, it was completely, really, 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 really bad. But we've been seeing things changing in the spiritual realm over this area. And there's some things God has shown me that I've not been released to say yet. But I've shared with some few people that intercede with me. But I believe there is an explosion that's going to hit this city. It's going to shake every, every territory. You see what God is doing right now is doing a deep work in the spiritual realm. That even the religious leaders don't even know about. And I'll tell you why. Because they might try to stop it. Because sometimes try, the enemy will try to do something like that. But there's a people that God is working on. You may be going through a lot of persecution. But God is preparing you for the future. What you're going through now is nothing compared to what God is going to do in the future. And I'm here to tell you, as you continue to remain faithful, you're going to participate in everything that God has planned to do in this region. For his glory. Because I have a word for the people that are here. Stand firm. Don't quit. Maybe nobody knows you. Maybe you're facing all kind of persecution in your life. Know that the Lord is with you. And he will see you through in the name of Jesus. And I'm so grateful to see Pastor Peggy because I was there Thursday. We drove and came there Thursday and had a wonderful time. She's so much open to the things of the spirit. And uh, uh, God, the way he moved in her life to bring that facility to us. I mean, 25 acres. That's a large place. And the atmosphere. When God is moving, he's what? He's moving. God could change your story today. I want to encourage all the pastors, men and women of God that are here, continue to stand, continue to deliver what God has given you. Let no devil intimidate you. You are an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. The scripture we're going to read here as I deliver the word from heaven is, Arise, shine, for the light is come. It doesn't end there because what are you going to shine unless you are really in the glory? It says, arise, shine, for the light has come. For the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It says in verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Wow. The heavenly father does not just do things for the sake of doing them. He has a purpose why he does them. Father, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. No believer will represent God unless they are fully submitted to his spirit. And I'll, sh I'll tell you why. Because unless the spirit of God reveals to me or to you who God is, we do not know him. The Bible says, if we know him, we shall do what? Exploits. Some people try to cast out the devil. The devil laughed at them. This is what the devil said. Jesus we know. And also they said they know his disciple. Then they question the these people, who are you? 
the devil does not play games. Every believer has to submit to the Holy Spirit. It says here, rise shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It's the glory of the Lord. It's the visible, radiant manifestation of his presence. When we are in the glory, when we are in his presence, submitted to him, we shine the light. When we step out of the realm, we stop shining the light. We shine ourselves. And when people look at us, they don't see Christ. They see us. And when they see us, they don't see hope. They see hopelessness. It's the intention of the enemy to turn every believer into a weak, defeated, double-minded Christian. So he can use all your double-mindedness against you to challenge your confidence. Today I'm here to tell you that in the name of Jesus, you're stepping out of that double-mindedness. And you're going to have a firm position where you stand in Christ and are not altered or in by anything the enemy does or says light shines to shut darkness off he says there's darkness in the world deep darkness shall rise upon people but he says his glory shall be upon thee it says verse in verse now watch here in verse 2 for behold darkness shall cover the earth God knows that homosexuals are trying to take over America give me a break they want to be your school teachers they want to be governors presidents they want to be everything and they hate God. One homosexual took the Bible, taught in pieces. They want to take over everything in America and around the world. That is darkness. Well, don't judge them. No, I'm not judging them. I'm letting you know God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of wickedness. Can I hear an amen to that? You now, if the Lord told Lot nobody should look back, and Lot's wife looked back, she became a pill of salt. She couldn't bring the corruption from Sodom to the new territory. God cannot stand sin. God cannot look on sin. We may sanctify it and consecrate it as human beings and say it's okay. But we never created God. We as human, we are created. So we can't tell God you are wrong. You should have created us like this. When, you, see, you see, the Bible doesn't only say darkness, it also says, please listen to this. And this is God speaking to us because we're, we're reading the scripture. It says, and gross darkness, gross word, darkness. It says in the Amplified Bible, dense, dense darkness. All peoples. Wow, so the enemy is trying to infiltrate the church. He's trying to take over the pulpit. Why? Because unless the church endorses something, the enemy cannot push it forward. That's why he tried to use the church in the Roman Empire to push his wickedness. Now he's trying to use the church in America to push his wickedness. Wickedness. Okay, if they think it's okay for them to have homosexuality as a lifestyle, why are they trying now to sue churches for not ordaining or embracing that lifestyle? There's a civil suit against all churches in America. Presented by this millionaire trying to force churches to have to recognize homosexual marriages. Churches are going to have to stand and put their foot down on this. Because the moment you perform that marriage, you become an Ichabod, the glory debates. I'm not afraid to say that. I can say it anywhere I want to say it. I'm not intimidated by the devil because I've seen Jesus face to face. He's more powerful than any devil. We have to fear God. The fear of God must return back in the church. In the house of God. Amen. Brethren. I love you. And I'm going to pray for you. But I don't want you to go to hell. You saw that young lady that was singing right here. Stand up so they see you. Right there. She's in our choir.
two weeks ago, I believe it was two weeks ago, the Lord visited her and took her and showed her hell. And he began to show her Christians in hell, preachers in hell, ministers in hell. And he told her, God, tell my servant before you tell the church. And she called my phone screaming. And I, I, I knew because God has been speaking to me about telling the church to wake up and repent. And the things she shared are real. How choir members, preachers, one preacher she talked about was living in adultery, was teaching that homosexuality is okay, and he was in hell crying and cursing at God. When she shared that testimony, the conviction hit the room. She talked about how the youth being rebellious, going to church just for a routine, not really seeking God. Salvation is a gift, but we don't play with it. The Bible says the soul that sins will perish in hell. I'm not here to tell you that God is going to kill you. No, you are given grace. There's a lot of believers going to heaven. But those who, take, who don't take their salvation serious, they miss it. I want you to be blessed, but I want you to make it to heaven too. And that's why I'm going to give you the full course. Because God loves you. Thank you. Before I begin to minister, I want to say this. Don't let nobody tell you that Jesus doesn't love you. He loves you very dearly. And that's the same thing he told this young lady. Go tell them my people love them. If they confess their sin, I'll forgive them. If they're struggling, I'll help them. The Lord never put you in the front line to fight the enemy on your own. I'm going to show you the things God has given you from today onwards. You'll never face the enemy in your understanding. Face him with the light. The light is the word of God. Someone say, let your word begin to release into me inspiration, revelation, faith, so I can live. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. When we begin to submit to him and allow his word to marinate us and let it inspire us by faith, his glory is activated. Someone say, amen. When the glory of God is activated, it puts a shield on us. The children of Israel left Egypt to go to the promised land. God did not leave them to go alone because Moses told the Lord, I'm not going to lead these people unless you tell me who is going with me. What was with him? God himself, his presence. And there was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, symbol of his glory. When they were hungry, food fell from heaven. When they were thirsty, the rock gushed out water. All their needs were met. They did not have a mortgage. And their clothes never ran out. And their shoes never ran out. When you're in the glory, need cannot consume you. Where Jehovah Jireh is, provision is. The Bible says the Lord shall supply my need. He itemizes everything. But he doesn't say according to riches in Uncle Sam. He says according to riches what? In glory. Can I hear an amen to that? So which means if you have a need, he has already what? Supplied. But you see what? You have to understand that the enemy wants to put us in a combustion in a little limitation with our understanding and our thinking. So we put limits on God. But when we open our eyes to see then we can walk in victory. And I'm going to show you how this works. Because from today onwards, you should never murmur or complain. That's why the Bible says murmuring is sin. Because when you murmur, the destroyer walks in. Neither murmur you like some murmured and were destroyed by what? The destroyer. That's why when those people went to the land to spy on the land, when they saw the giants and they came back, they were wroth at God. God didn't let them enter the land. No. Because they were double-minded. That's it. You will not enter the land. But Joshua and Caleb knew God was there. God will not show you a giant to destroy you. 
God will show you a giant so you can knock him out. Did you hear what I said here? That's why David killed Goliath because David had killed all these lions and everything. He knew God was with him. He wasn't scared of that giant. Are there some giants in your life? Get ready. You are about to, you are about to knock them out. One by one. Bam, 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 bam. One of the giants is called debt. I hate debt. I don't like debt. The Bible says if you owe somebody, you're their servant. Somebody says, I want my home paid off. And all my school loans paid off. All my student loans paid off. You know, I'm going to expose that giant called debt. Because debt is the way people think. Now they've introduced a system where you graduate from whatever college. They make it easy for you to get a loan. To get a car. But we are people that are testifying that God has given debt free cars. One woman testified. I was in, uh, the, I was in Boynton at the Marriott in a crusade and I told people open your bags they opened their purses and they said God is dropping keys and she said I believe and I receive that's all she said two weeks later I believe it was two weeks later we came from Holy Land in Orlando when we came back somebody called and said come see me I, got, I want to talk to you so when she went to see this person the person gave her a 2014 debt free car just gave her the keys and said this is yours 2014 debt freaker. You know when she received it? Not when the person who gave her the key. No. When she was in a service, when I said, open your purse, God is dropping some keys. She said, I believe and I receive. Now she's driving a debt free 2014 car. God can do the same for you. Can I hear amen to that? Somebody said, the Lord shall supply. All my need. According to his riches and glory. Through Christ Jesus. I said this with all humility. You are coming out of debt. By faith. God is going to teach you. Step by step. Step by what? When you follow these principles one by one, you're going to be surprised. If you own a property, a home or anything, I want you to buy a bottle of oil and dedicate that property to the Lord. You will never struggle to make your house payments ever again. Did you hear me? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord will take care of it. God will direct finances to you and you're going to pay it off there is a woman in our church she came and told me her boss gave her a Lexus gave her what? a Lexus and a few weeks later she came and told me there's something else the boss is going to do for her but I can't talk about it it's in process some things you don't talk about when they're in process when a baby is in a womb you don't expose it until the time has come for the baby to come out. Some of you guys fixing to bless you. He's about to do it. There are people. There is a man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. There's a lot of things I could talk about right now. But I'm just going to go back to the teaching. Let me show you something here. When the giant cold debt comes. The first thing it does is to intimidate you. To tell you that forever you'll be in debt. Now I'm here to tell you not forever. It's going to take one step at a time. There is supernatural debt cancellation. A woman, her friend, brought a prayer request for her. She owed the IRS $150,000. Now, you know, that's a lot of money, and they could freeze everything. She put that prayer request in a prayer box. Supernaturally, God canceled her debt when she, re she received a letter from the IRS that told her we have forgiven you of this debt you don't have to pay the anything <laughs> now they don't do that unless God touches them another lady she owed thousands and I prayed for her 
they wrote her a letter apologizing for giving her that kind of bill. Why would the IRS apologize to somebody? Another woman.